Hi, I'm Erica from The Pancake Princess, and today we're trying nine different Liège waffles. So Liège waffles are from Belgium, and they're very similar to Belgian waffles, but with a few key differences. So primarily they use pearl sugar, which is a like giant piece of compressed sugar that kind of melts into a caramelized pocket of sweetness in these waffles once it's cooked. Um, and the dough itself is yeasted versus most like Belgian waffles in the US are not yeasted. And the dough is very similar to a brioche, so like very buttery, very rich, very dense. So these waffles are also smaller than you'll normally find in the US. So we tried nine different recipes. I'm gonna taste my way through them all and let you know my thoughts on each. So let's take a look. This recipe is by Hummingbird High. It's very similar to a popular recipe by Food & Wine, but Hummingbird High uses an overnight rest, which I find is typically easier for my schedule than doing two like hour-long rests. Um, this also had one of the highest ratios of egg in the batter and calls for melted butter instead of softened butter, which was only one of three recipes to use that. So I was really curious to see if using melted butter instead of softened butter being incorporated into the dough in that sense would make a difference in the texture. I didn't really see a difference, which is awesome because for me, I prefer incorporating melted butter into the dough. Um, Taste-wise, I love the flavor. It's a little bit eggy, very rich. Um, the texture was very crispy around the edges, but tender on the inside. It just kind of like melts in your mouth. Um, and even though it was um, rested overnight, there wasn't too much of that like yeasty fermented flavor. I felt like it was very balanced. So overall, love this waffle. You should definitely try it. This recipe is from a blog called the Liege Waffle.wordpress, and this is a super popular recipe that has been adapted by a lot of different bloggers on the internet, including some of the other recipes that we tried. Um, so this is kind of the OG recipe. Um, it's very complicated. It calls for five different rising times, so it's quite complex. Um, it uses bread flour, it calls for a little bit of honey, and it has the lowest, one of the lowest egg ratios of all the waffles we tried. Oh my gosh, so hot. So you'll notice that there's kind of like a caramelization on um, this waffle, which comes from the pearl sugar melting in the waffle maker. And so you'll see that on some of the other waffles, sometimes the sugar looks a little bit burnt, which is really just a factor of me um, cooking waffles and burnt sugar in the waffle iron. But the waffle itself is so delicious. You can kind of see a bunch of stretchy layers in here. And I think that's partly due to folding the waffle dough um, before the overnight rest. Um, and that helps contribute some of the layers to the dough, almost like a croissant. I mean, obviously not really that similar, but when you bite into it, the layers are just so stretchy and flaky and the taste is like super rich. You get like a nice fermented taste from the overnight rest. Um, so overall, I can see why this waffle is so popular. It tastes pretty authentic as far as I can recall. This recipe is by Spitten Kitchen and it is one of the recipes that was adapted from the Liege Waffle WordPress site. And so this recipe is very similar, but it uses a little less flour, a little less butter, a little less sugar, and streamlines the rising process. So you can either do it overnight and then do some rising, a few hours of rising in the morning, or you can do a few hour, hours of rising and then do an overnight rest and they'll be ready to go in the morning. So I did the latter. So as to be expected, this recipe tastes fairly similar to the Liege Waffle WordPress recipe, but I would say it feels just a little bit breadier, a little bit less sweet. Um, this is if I'm really pulling hairs, and there's not as much of the fermented taste, probably because it didn't rise quite as long on the countertop, um, which I am willing to sacrifice that if I don't have to babysit the dough through five different rising times. So I would say this is a great streamlined version of the Liege Waffle WordPress. This recipe is by Handle the Heat, and once again, it is very similar to the Liege Waffle WordPress recipe, but it uses bread flour, whereas Smitten Kitchen used all-purpose flour, and it does keep the honey whereas Smitten Kitchen omitted it. So I was just curious to see if these tiny changes would make a difference. So to me, this waffle feels more chewy than the Smitten Kitchen waffle, which I think is due to the bread flour in Handle the Heat, whereas it doesn't feel, it feels a little bit chewier than the Liege Waffle WordPress original. I think because that one is more kind of like layered and stretchy and this one just has like a good amount of chew to it. 
Um, Taste-wise, compared to the Liege Waffle WordPress waffle, it has less of that fermented flavor. I just tasted them again side by side, and the Liege Waffle WordPress one really has like a strong fermented yeasty flavor, and this one is much more mild. So if you prefer that, I would go with Handled the Heat. Once again, it has a much more streamlined rising process, similar to Smitten Kitchen, so much easier to make. This recipe is by Kitchen Whisperer, and this is another recipe that uses honey in the dough, and it actually also incorporates white sugar and brown sugar, which no other recipe did. But it really stood out for its use of liquid, so it has both milk and water at a much higher ratio than most other recipes, and it also has a much lower ratio of butter, like almost half compared to the Liege Waffle WordPress recipe, so kind of diluting the richness of the butter by adding more liquid from the milk and the water. So the flavor of this waffle is great. The dough is nice and sweet. The texture is really nice and crispy with like a doughy inside when it's fresh out of the um, waffle iron. I will say this is the recipe that went soft the fastest as all of the waffles were kind of cooling on the rack. So if you want a waffle that's gonna kind of stay structured and crisp and be good even when it's cold, I would probably choose another waffle. But if you're gonna eat this straight out of the waffle iron, I would say this is like on par with all the other waffles. Super delicious, you really can't go wrong with the Liege waffle. This recipe is by Ann Olson. This recipe stood out because it's the only recipe that uses sparkling water in the dough. It is also one of three recipes that uses melted butter instead of softened butter when incorporating the butter into the dough. Um, and it gives you an option to either rise the dough overnight or to do a one hour rise at room temperature. So this recipe is by far the most picturesque recipe. It just came out of the waffle maker consistently looking the most beautiful to me. Um, very evenly cooked. But to me, this waffle could be a little bit sweeter. So it had one of the lower ratios of pearl sugar in the batter. Um, and to me, I don't usually keep sparkling water around the house, so I probably would not revisit this exact recipe over and over, but I would be curious to try making it with milk and with some added pearl sugar to add a little more sweetness to the waffle. This recipe is by Lars Own. It's a popular brand that makes Belgian pearl sugar. This recipe is super simple. It uses milk as the liquid and it only calls for 30 minutes of rising time, which is the lowest amount across of all of these recipes. So if you are looking to make liege waffles um, in a hurry, this is the recipe for you. So in contrast to Kitchen Whisper, this is a waffle that stays very structured and crisp even when it kind of cools down. So obviously you should eat them hot if you can but when this is cold, it's still good. Um, but this is a very like stretchy, layered, um, buttery, rich waffle. I really think that it's an incredible um, end product for such a short amount of rising time, and it's just like a very simple recipe. So if you are just starting out with Liege waffles and you don't want to sit around or let your batter rest overnight, I can't recommend this waffle enough. This recipe is supposedly by the Waffles and Dingas food truck. I found it on a site called Roaming Hunger. It was a huge recipe. I scaled it down to just a quarter of the recipe for this recipe trial, and it stood out because it uses whipped egg whites, and it uses an even higher ratio of liquid compared to Kitchen Whisperer, so really a high proportion of milk and water in this recipe, so I was curious to see how it would turn out. Okay, with such a high ratio of liquid in the batter, it made a really loose batter, and so when the waffle cooked up, it was really nice and crispy on the outside and extremely airy on the inside. VH waffles are typically a little more dense with like nice layers in them, and this was just airy, more like a typical Belgian waffle. So um, they also didn't specify how much sugar to put in the waffle, so I put about a little less than a cup which um, was not enough sugar for me. I would put in more next time. But I also probably wouldn't revisit this waffle if I was trying to make a Liege waffle because to me, the airiness is just not super similar to what we're going for. So um, nice try with the whipped egg whites. We'll not be doing that again. This recipe is from a blog called Foodist and it is apparently from someone's friend who is from Belgium, so it's supposed to be super authentic. This recipe stood out because it uses an incredibly high amount of yeast, so I think five tablespoons for the full recipe. We halved it for this test, but it was still way more yeast compared to most other recipes. It also is one of the three recipes that uses melted butter in the dough. Enjoy my question. This was one of the denser waffles to me. It is very cakey with like a really, um, if it was like a cake, it would have like a very tight crumb, but it's just like a much denser and not like the opposite of waffles and dingas and like not airy, um, but great texture. I feel like a great amount of sweetness. Um, 
yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm out of adjectives for the day. If I had to pick a favorite waffle, as usual, I'm not gonna pick just one. So I liked Hummingbird High and Smitten Kitchen for just like all around like beautifully like layered waffles that were perfectly rich and dense. Um, great crisp on the outside, stayed nice and structured when they cooled down. Um, I did enjoy the Liege Waffle WordPress waffle, but I just don't think it's worth all of the um, effort that you have to put into the rising times and the super fermented flavor is not my personal fave. So obviously a good waffle, but probably not my go-to. And then I would say the other notable one for me was Anna Olsen. I just think that this is such a beautiful looking waffle. I really wanna try this recipe again with just a little more pearl sugar to get that sweetness in it. Um, but yeah, those would probably be my top picks. Thank you guys so much for watching. So I have handed out samples of all of these waffles to my tasters and I'll be putting the full data analysis up on my blog at thepancakeprincess.com. For more bake-offs, you can find me at thepancakeprincess.com or Talk about innovation. <laughs> For more bake offs, you can find me on Instagram at The Pancake Princess or my blog, thepancakeprincess.com, and see you next time. I'm not doing the finger guns. <laughs>